It's August 2nd. I've had trouble getting back in front to uh, to record. I'm going to be doing it more from my phone. I'm back on the road again today, but I wanted to get this out early. Let's talk some real quick foreign policy. Venezuela, China, and North Korea. Let's look at Venezuela. Well, uh, Maduro, the dictator down there, has totally taken over democracy. He has destroyed democracy. It is now a Castorite type country, though it was already on its way. Um, they are taking all the uh, leaders and, and jailing them. They're killing people. But it also, just as a little side note, shows one the utility of the Second Amendment. Very interesting. You know, I've been fighting hard against assault weapons here in this country, but I've always been a believer of the Second Amendment. In, in uh, Venezuela, people don't have the right to own guns. So what's happened is the government is totally taking control. The military controls everything, and there is no way, no way for the people to fight back except to have a Gandhi come in there and do what has to be done to just let people kind of sit down and, and protest. But what's going to happen there is they're just going to kill everybody. It's no different than what Castro did in Cuba. It's no different than what Mao did in, Mao Zedong did in China, and it's no different than what's going on here. And as Maduro keeps doing it, we do nothing. We keep buying their gas. We've been yelling. I've been yelling. No go to sit go. That is the Venezuelan gas. People are starving there. They have absolutely no medicine, and we buy their gas. We should shut it down. Quit buying their fuel. Shut it down. Our banks and, 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 and hedge funds need to stop buying their bonds. We are encouraging this. We are encouraging the enslavement of the Venezuelan people. Go on America. Somebody showed me a we do a lot in Facebook. Please follow us on Facebook. If you want to follow United Friends, just put it in there and let me know you've been following me here, and I will make you a friend immediately. We've been doing a lot on Facebook. A person came up with a really great cartoon which showed the end of American exceptionalism. We are letting this go. The president's doing very minimal, very, very minimal. Let's talk North Korea. I have to agree with the way the president's been moving here. I think they're playing two games. Secretary Tillerson is holding out the olive branch while President Trump says we're not, we're not backing off. South Korea and, and the United States and Japan are doing joint military missions over and around North Korea. I think it's the right thing to do. We have to let them know we're not going to put up with it. And I do think it's something to consider. I don't know if I totally agree with it yet to, to allow South Korea and Japan to, to arm up with nuclear weapons. Wow. I don't know if that's the answer. It may be. It's sure going to worry China even more if that happens. And now I have to agree today with what's going on with China. The, the, the Trump administration has put on uh, some real, um, I hope, trade restrictions, which will bite. Um, note what's going on, though. We all worry about China. China's militarizing the South China Sea, but the Chinese have their own problems. They can't just look at North Korea. They have a real issue with India. Look at Bhutan. If you follow what's been going on there in the early 60s, they had a little war there. The Chinese ran over the Indians. It wouldn't happen this time. But China says this is what, uh, what, we, what, uh, what is owed to us, what is ours, like they do with South China Sea islands. And they've been moving into Bhutan and trying to build a, a train there. The government of Bhutan called over to the Indians, and India has come in, and now they're meeting them head on. Nobody's talking about this. This is a real flashpoint, and the Chinese have to worry about it. So it puts us in a stronger position because the Chinese aren't just focusing on North Korea. They're not just this big, gargantuan country that has nothing to worry about. they got pollution. they got environmental issues. They, they've got all these problems. They have a population issue, not enough women, and now they have this issue with India. And, and plus their ethnic groups, Uyghurs and the others don't like them. So the Chinese are not a country that's as strong as everyone thinks they are. It's not the China generation coming in there. I've been hearing that too long. I heard it with Japan. So I agree with what President Trump is doing. We have to put more heat on China. We have to keep putting more heat on North Korea. And we got to wake up and put some heat on Venezuela. No go to Sitco. And then why are people buying Luke oil? Luke oil, L-U-K-O-I-L. That's the Russian oil. That's the Russian oil. Yeah, they threw out 700 some odd diplomats. Big deal. The Russians have to be stared down. We have to let them know which President Obama did not do that we're only going to put up with so much. And it's really great what the House and Senate did. Maybe one day the President will get around to signing the uh, the, the, the bill, which, which limits him and, and, and keeps sanctions on Russia. 
We have to be strong here. This is a problem, as we've been saying, an accumulation of over 16 years of horrible foreign policy, and we are now in a position where we're going to have to be strong, be tough. I'm not saying more. I'm not saying anybody killing or anything like that. We just have to be strong, and we have to be tough and let the world know we ain't putting up with it anymore. I think we'll find things will start going. So I agree with President Trump what he's doing with China. I think he's doing not nearly enough in Venezuela. North Korea is pushing. I like the idea of Secretary Tillerson and the president pushing off against each other. That's where we are. I don't want to start banging on the president for all of his major mistakes here in America. I've done that all over Facebook. I want to just put this in here now. So keep an eye on foreign policy because we have taken the position. I still stick with it. Foreign policy is what is going to either bring down this president or get him reelected. That's what's going to happen. The economy is moving on its own. This is where the issue is. Keep an eye on foreign policy. If military force, a military war breaks out, because we've already had a cyber war, if a military war breaks out, we've got to keep an eye out for this. Very interesting stuff. Worrisome, but I think we're going to pull this out. The United States, I think, and I always say it, is still the greatest nation on this earth and will come out fine. But it could be a whole lot of downtime before that. See you soon. Please. Follow us, recommend us, like us, subscribe, comment. I am there to respond. And this isn't victory. It's peace because I'm a guy of the 60s. Thank you.